All right, we're looking at what I would call a particle swarm here. And this is a common thing to consider when you're doing um, the theorems of mechanics. So I have a particle swarm. It's just a bunch of arbitrary masses at arbitrary positions moving in arbitrary directions. And what we're going to do is go after a quantity called the center of mass velocity that turns out to be very useful. So just a quick reminder, the center of mass position of all of these particles is given by 1 over the total mass multiplied by the sum of every position multiplied by how much mass is there. And this is a way of giving us a weighted average of the position of every particle. Now, it's commonly useful to turn this thing around and write it this way. The total mass times the center of mass position is given by the sum of all the masses multiplied by their individual positions. This just happens a lot when you're dabbling in the theorems of mechanics. So this thing is going to be useful later. And what I want to do is write down the total momentum of all of these particles. So I'm going to write P net. And that's just going to be m1 times its velocity plus m2 times its velocity and so on and so on all the way to the nth particle so mn vn but then i remember a velocity vector is really a time derivative of a position vector and at this point maybe you see where i'm going with this um, if my masses are constant, then that time derivative is not going to interfere with the masses, and I can move it inside of each of these terms. And so the first one is the time derivative of m1, r1. I won't bother writing the second term. I'm just going to follow the pattern all the way out to the time derivative of mn, rn. But the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. In other words, I could just write this all as the time derivative of m1 r1 plus dot 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 plus mn rn. And I recognize that from our little reminder at the beginning as the entire mass multiplied by the center of mass position entire mass times center of mass position. But provided the total mass is constant, that can come out in front of the derivative. And I get total mass times the time derivative of the center of mass position. In other words, total mass times the velocity at which the center of mass of the system is moving. So I get this important new theorem. The net momentum of a distribution of particles is given by the total of mass multiplied by the velocity of the center of mass. In applications, the importance of this is that we can analyze processes in a reference frame that's moving along with the center of mass. So we call that the center of mass reference frame. And the cool thing that happens in that reference frame, if you're running along at exactly the same velocity as the center of mass, well, in the center of mass reference frame, the center of mass velocity is zero, and therefore the net momentum is zero, and that simplifies a lot of calculations. So in the center of mass reference frame, V center of mass is going to be equal to zero, which implies the net momentum of the system is going to be zero. All right, let's see how to transform a collision problem into the center of mass reference frame. And all I'm going to do here is transform into that reference frame and then verify that this theorem is correct, that if we're in the center of mass reference frame, the net momentum must be zero. We'll get into a more serious, complete example in another video. So just to remind you, we found out the net momentum of a system of particles is given by the total mass times the center of mass velocity. So as this large block slides to the right rather fast and this small block slides to the left rather slow, um, I can see that the center of mass should be getting dragged to the right. So more mass is further to the right on average as, as these blocks proceed. 
So my center of mass velocity should be something to the right. I find it by just getting the net momentum. So I have the mass of the large block times its velocity. The velocity of the second block is negative, so I'm just moving the minus sign out in front. So minus one kilogram. Oops, I almost double counted my negative times two, two meters per second. And then my total mass here is three kilograms. And I'm left with a center of mass velocity. So crunching the numbers real quick. To three sig figs, I get that the center of mass is moving to the right at 2.67 meters per second. All right, now the whole point of this is that I want to transform the problem into a reference frame that's moving to the right at 2.67 meters per second. So I guess I'll mark a little center of mass here and put a velocity vector on it. And say in the lab frame, that's moving to the right at 2.67 meters per second. But now I'm going to start running that fast. So let's draw a new picture. All right, here we are in the center of mass frame. And again, what I'm doing is running to the right at 2.67 meters per second. That makes the rightward moving block move away from me slower than it did before. So I am subtracting to get there. The velocity of this block is now going to be 5 minus 2.67 meters per second. In other words, 2.33 meters per second. Meanwhile, I'm running at a block that was already moving 2 meters per second to the left. So it's going to have a relative velocity now of 4.67 meters per second in the center of mass frame. Again, the special thing that happens in this reference frame is that because we're, we're co-moving with the center of mass, when we look at things in the center of mass reference frame, we're guaranteed to have a center of mass velocity of zero. And that automatically means the net momentum is zero. And that zero is very powerful. It makes otherwise immensely complex problems so easy that you can guess the answer. So let's just verify here that the net momentum turns out to be zero in the center of mass frame. And I have P net equal to the first mass times its velocity. Second term has a negative velocity. The mass is one kilogram. Speed is 4.67 meters per second. And I have been rounding a little bit, so it's not exact, but I have 4.66 kilogram meters per second pointing to the right from that first mass and then of 4.67 with a minus sign on it pointing to the left and that is approximately zero and of course if we didn't round at all it'd be exactly zero i'll post a link to an elastic collision that's fully solved by using the center of mass reference frame so that you can see the utility of this approach